Today, I wanted to talk about anxiety. And I wanted to get a little personal with this because I used to have a huge problem with anxiety. You know, I was doing and pursuing the spiritual path, but I, and I tried to tell people whenever it was appropriate that, you know, look, I'm on medication. I'm not speaking to you as someone who's figured it all out. I'm speaking to you as someone who's on the path, midway on the path, if not at the beginning, using crutches, using training wheels. In fact, there was, I had a lot of guilt, actually, because I didn't want to come across as someone who knew what they were talking about when I had this aid. I kind of felt like all of my hugnations should have like an asterisk next to them in the same way that you know, certain home run kings have asterisks next to their the stats because it's now it's been to come out that they use steroids. I kind of felt like I was cheating, but I was okay with that. I mean, in the end, my quality of life is more important than you know my stats. And over the years, over about ten years of being on this medication, I kind of tapered down, and so for the last maybe four years that I was on it, I was on a very small dose, but every time I tried to come off it, the dark cloud and the uh, would come back, and so I just stayed. And then about two and a half years ago, my friend Dimitri and I went to Playa del Carmen, which is a Mexican resort area, and I didn't bring my meds. And this was a little bit stressful because I've been here before. I know what's coming. I know the darkness. I mean, in some ways, it's like, look, I, I know I can get through it. I know what the funk is. I know, you know, I've been through that place many times. And I should say that, you know, being on the medication did not mean that I didn't have funks. It meant that those funks became cycles. And I would get into a dark place and it would go through me over the course of hours or days. Whereas, before I was on the medication, when I fell into, I had a constant buzz, and then when I got depressed, it was like a long period of time, weeks. So even in the medicated state, I knew what the funks were. I knew that I could manage it. I could make it till we got home. You know, I, I went to a, a pharmacy in Mexico, but if you've ever been to a pharmacy in Mexico, I mean, it's like, if you want Viagra, you're set. Uh, but this was a more obscure, medication and so uh, um, I just kind of buckled down and then a couple nights later or while we we're vacationing we went out to one of the, the nightclub areas where you know all the people from all over the world who are vacationing there go out to dance under the warm skies right on the ocean it's just beautiful I mean really like paradise and I was there and and there was you know, all these beautiful people dancing, and I was tapping my feet and smiling, and I was just like, <sighs> paralyzed. And I was, I was, you know, I've been on this path for a while, so I'm, I'm looking in my inside, and I'm trying to feel and, and notice and be an observer to these feelings. And I was with Dimitri, and so I, I, we'd been having a fairly deep vacation where we've been uh, reading Alan Watts the book and talking a lot about the nature of I and the nature of the universe and and so you know I we were at this dance club with our coronas and I was like you know I I'm, I'm feeling so paralyzed right now I'm feeling this this fear you know that I, I, I want to go dance but I'm so afraid to and he's like what are you afraid of and I was like well I don't know maybe that they'll, I'll be rejected, you know, that I'll start dancing with someone and, and they'll roll their eyes and, you know, that kind of, that same fear that I've had most of my life, that desire to be cool, the desire to be thought of as awesome and that if somebody, anybody doesn't think so, it's just crippling. And even, even the, the thought that that could happen became paralyzing. And Dimitri said to me, he said, but you know, that you are the one, you are God. We are all part of this one thing, this one amazing divine experience of the universe that you're experiencing right now as you. 
those people are experiencing you as them. Why don't you go introduce yourself to yourself? And it was this in my head, like, right. When I am my true self, I am love. I am dialed in to the beauty and the perfection of the universe. And if I can get in touch with that place, who would not want to meet me? The only person who wouldn't want to meet that person, that expression of the divine, is someone who is caught up in their own ego stuff. Which I understand because I get caught up in mine too. But if for some reason the worst case scenario happened and that person like went, oh, oh my God, you know, I was now in a posi position to see that that dismissal wasn't some dragon of, of judgment and you know, negative expression that had a control over me that I needed to try to impress, I needed to try to make like me. It wasn't a dragon at all. It's a little puppy. If I'm in the love state, I'm in a realm way above any dragon. It's actually a little bitty thing that's burying its teeth from a place of fear. And if I can see that, I can embrace someone who is on the love plane with love, and I can see someone who is judging me right through them to the love place that's inside them and understand that you are, you're an untrained puppy. I get it. It's okay. That has nothing to do with me. I bring you nothing but a reflection of the divine that is you. If you see in that anything that makes you do anything wacky or express something or, or want to make me feel bad, well, I'm so sorry about that. I still love you, but I'm going to go dance with these people who are more in touch and more in tune with this divine pulse. And so I did. And I went on the dance floor and I danced with all sorts of people. And I remember there, there was a Black Eyed Peas remix, some Let's Party Tonight or something like that, one of those, those hits. And it seemed like magic. People from all over the world dancing under the moonlight and the, the moonlight on the water right next to us. And, and we were all just bouncing like individuals, but part of something one, like blood cells in a vein. You know, we're individuals, but we're all part of one thing. And I think that is one of those become part of my toolbox, one of those things to remember that in any situation, if I'm starting to feel the fear, if I'm starting to feel afraid of being judged, or I'm like, wait a minute, anything that, the only thing that can be judged here is my ego roles, this desire to be something. My true self can be nothing but a reflection of all that is good in that person. And so I can go into a social situation with the knowledge that I'm a gift. Every interaction is a divine interaction. Anything that is not divine and loving is brought to from an ego, either mine or theirs. This is huge to me because of the amount of my life and the amount of pain and choices that I have made trying to free myself of or get out of or avoid discomfort, feeling uncool, feeling not good enough or, you know, to insert a blank, not cool enough, whatever. And being able to pull out and see, oh, all of those feelings are coming from a place that is a, my personality, that is this collection of values and beliefs that has been layered on top of my true nature. A couple nights ago, um, I was hanging out with Belicious, who is in the middle right now of uh, preparing for a trade show for her business. First trade show, first business, it has been an honor to watch her as she's created this business and 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 really 
crafted this piece of art that happens to be a commercial enterprise, but everything about it is, is, is an expression of who she is and what she wants to bring into the world and how she wants to help people. And, and it's been neat. Re very recently, she's, she's teamed up with someone who's been a, a partner to her, and so they've been reflecting each other's talents and, and really creating this thing that is, 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 is awesome. And, you know, part of me is always trying to say, you know, don't stress so much about all of these details without, you know, it's, I, I would be a little sloppier, but you know, she's doing every picture in the, in the brochure is getting printed, you know, is, is well thought out. And, and it's like a, another brushstroke of this masterpiece that she's been working on. And as she was explaining to me more and more of like, Oh, she's going to do this deal and this sale and there's going to be this thing and she's trying to like really figure out well if somebody wants to, to defend this and, and they want to refund that and what am i going to say and, and, and really trying to figure out all of the possibilities of all the things that could go wrong and make sure she's prepared for them and and how you know with people and i was like wait a minute yeah, this is good that you're preparing for this but i could feel the anxiousness and it reminded me so much of the anxiousness that i was that i'd felt on the dance floor and I wanted to remind her, and in doing so, remind myself, like, look, what you are providing here is, you are a salesperson, sure, you're trying to give this, you want to make a sale, you want to bring in money, but you're not trying to trick them, you're not selling snake oil, you're not, you know, trying to manipulate someone into, you know, getting something they don't need, you are, you have a gift, you have something incredible to make someone's experience better, your job is to help them understand how much this is going to be amazing for them. They're potentially, you know, most magical day of their life. And they have, through you and your partner, the ability to take it to this really amazing level. Your skills are top notch. Your passion, unsurpassed. The energy and mentality that you bring to the experience is a gift to this person. I know it because I know the way that you talk about it. And so when you can see yourself in, as a salesperson, not as someone who's trying to make the sale, but as someone who's trying to give your gift, facilitate this person, this company, to having a better experience, that can shift everything then you can see yourself and then rejection is is not a rejection rejection is this person not quite maybe they don't want it maybe you know what they want is the cheapest possible solution and they're going to be like nailing you on deals and what about this percentage and you're like you know what what you want is the cheapest possible solution what i offer is something amazing and i put a lot more into it and it's more it costs more obviously that's how things work so, no problem. Somebody then going, oh, you're too expensive, or oh my gosh, I can't believe you're charging that, or oh. if it were me, that would be every bit as painful as the, the dance floor rejection. Unless I can switch to that place of being like, ah, oh. oh. lucky you. You have the opportunity to have me work with you. Because you know what? No matter what you do, every relationship is just like that. Some are not going to be perfect matches. So that's okay. Some are going to be perfect matches where one plus one equals nine and you light up someone's life and they are grateful for the opportunity to give you that dance or pay you that commission or use your product or whatever it is. But unless you can get into that headspace, the energy that you bring to it will not be received in that way. You will be negotiated on a different level. Now, part of that is you have to be willing to stand by the value you bring. And there are people that will walk away. But it's important to stick in that place of strength. Um, 
A final example of this is I had a friend um, just contact me who, who had gone through some tough times and actually had a real public breakdown amongst um, some of his friends and uh, showed a dark side of himself. And he was really struggling with where to go, all the self-judgment. And, and then again, the same thing kept coming up where it's like he he kept seeing the people as these dragons with their judgment and i kept trying to explain that anyone that's judging you is not a peer anyone that's judging you especially about your spiritual path is not coming from a place ahead of you on the path the very nature that they're judging you means that they are a puppy dog that you can pet on the, on the top of the head and say, look, I'm, I'm walking with my shadow. I'm processing these things and I'm now pursuing love even, even more than ever. And it would be great if we could walk along this path together, but if I reflect anything in you that causes you to judge, that is, that is not me. That is, that is you missing the divinity in me. So I guess that's the, the, the kind of, the, the, the big anxiety tool that has helped me. And, the, and, and you know, to, to finish up my medication story, I have now been off of that for two and a half years. No medication whatsoever. Uh, excuse me, no prescription medication whatsoever. And, um, and I feel happier and less anxious than ever before. Because of learning these tips and learning these tricks and practicing these things. And I think training your brain, you know, you, 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 you change your patterns and you change your wiring. And so now when I have these dips and frustrations and anxiety, I feel them and I try to be aware of them, try to be a witness, try not to give them the steering wheel. Try to notice that this is a persona of mine, this is a, an identity, a role that I can sit with but do not have to let take control so that when the dragons, I feel the heat of the dragon's breath, I can stop running away and instead face it until it becomes a puppy. I'm sure, you know, this is uh, unnecessary. I'm sure you probably never feel anxious or anxiety and so this is old hat to you, but it is a, uh, oh no, you, you sometimes feel anxious? Yeah, I think we all do. And that's a good thing to remember because even those people judging, even those people making you feel that is a symptom of their own anxiety, their own frustrations. We all have those dips. It's part of being human. The cycles. It's part of the gift. I saw a, uh, a card on an altar this weekend and it said, the journey is the reward. And I love that. That's you know, I've been talking a lot lately about how the purpose of life is to experience life. Well, there you go. The journey is the reward. And that means all of it. That means the stumbling. That means the dragon's burns. That means the running away as well as the facing. It means the triumphs and all of it. It's the, it's the epicness of the cycles and the ups and the downs and, and all. As in our perfect divine selves, we are without drama. The human experience gift is that drama. And that kind of shifting back and forth from being in the humanness and balancing yourself with your divineness, that's kind of the ride. That's kind of the, the, the that's the game that is, for me, has become the way to enjoy it the most. You don't want to be totally, oh, you also don't want to be totally wah, wee, ah, wah. somewhere in the riding back and forth. What a ride! Kind of like playing a weekend soccer game. You charge like crazy for your team to score. You get bombed when the other team scores. And then at the end of the game, you have a beer. And remember, that was fun. And that's the whole, even though you lost the game, it was still, you're playing with your friends. That was sweet. So thank you for playing this scrimmage today. Thank you for listening to this archive or 
this live experience, this vibration, and allowing it to be a part of this now. Let's have a hug nation hug. Grab yourselves by the shoulders. And acknowledge the divine self inside of you that sometimes gets covered up in all sorts of beliefs and shoulds and fears. But know that that perfect divine self is always there. You can always lean back on it. You can always go back to the now and strip away all the stories and know that in this now, all you have is a set of feelings, sensations, Maybe that is an anxiety feeling, but really, what is it in that moment without a story? It is just a tension. That's something you can control. That's something you can manage. And in that now, you can then sink into your oneness, your connection, the fact that every person that you're encountering, no matter what their expressions say or words say, that you are intimately connected to them on levels that perhaps are hard to feel, but they are one, they are you. And if they don't recognize the divine gift of meeting another version of the divine in you, well, that's a shame. Luckily, there are millions of other people who are open to that gift. So let's squeeze this body. Let's be appreciative of this gift. It's wrapped so nicely. And as we go into this day, into this week, remember that you are a gift. You are a gift that gives gifts. As you smile at people, as you look into their eyes, as you acknowledge that they are a gift, these little bitty gestures elevate people, whether they like it or not, whether they know it or not. They elevate you, they elevate the entire vibration in little bitty ways. And that is a rock solid way to live. Walking your walk, giving your gift, allowing others to give theirs. Take a deep breath and just breathe in the gift. On behalf of Grandpa Caleb and all the love warriors, happy Hug Nation. Thank you. Thank you for being here, for sharing this, for being a gift. I am appreciative. I am grateful. I love you. Namaste. You only live once. Enjoy the color.